What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here. Today I'm very excited to bring you this video. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Essential Smartphone, a new bezel-less smartphone created by the co-founder of Android. Now I'm very excited to see this one. It's joining the pile of all of the new Android phones that seem to be doing the bezel-less thing. And this is a trend that I'm absolutely loving. I mean, the new Note 8, the Galaxy S8, the Sharp Oculus S2, we've got a new Mi Mix coming in a few days as well. And then the iPhone 8, of course, and this is the older Mi Mix, but the all follow one trend and that's to remove bezel make it as tiny as possible give you more screen and this is just another one of the smartphones so i'm so excited there's been so much buzz about the smartphone i just wanted to see it in person how it is you know what it's like is it a worthy phone that you would even consider out of all of the competitors yeah this is a tough year for smartphones. And by the way, there's the LG V30 as well. There's just like so many phones to decide from. There's so many brands. It's, it's a really hard year for that. Here's just another one to add to the list. Anyways, here it is. So the Essential PH1, very nice packaging, uh, very similar to something maybe Apple would do. Very clean cutout here. Uh, you can see there is very, very limited bezel here. They even beat Apple to the punch with the camera cut out the top sensor bar, except for there is it's just a camera up here. Anyways, let's get to unboxing this guy. All right, so they're calling this a black moon. By the way, this is a very interesting construction for a phone. So the borders are made of titanium. Which smartphone can you say is made out of titanium? That's kind of crazy. I've heard of titanium cases for smartphones, but this is on another level. Also, you've got ceramic for the glass backing or the ceramic backing. This guy is made of ceramic. It's a very tough material. This one still doesn't have any scratches. Literally just scratch proof completely. So I totally agree with the materials on this phone already. Now the front is made of Gorilla Glass 5. So the front isn't ceramic, but still the most durable glass on the market right now. All right, and here it is. Lovely packaging. So uh, we've got to cut the seal here. And uh, here it is. This is hard to open. Okay, there we go. Wow, this thing is a lot smaller than I expected. Holy crap. This is on the level of the iPhone 8. Look at this. These things are identical in size. That's crazy. That's something I did not expect. And uh, the cameras are very petite, very tiny. I'm not sure about the quality of those just from the size alone. It's a little bit disappointing. So here are the magnetic uh, points for data transfer. This is where you would plug in the 360 camera. It's a very interesting take on modular accessories, literally just connecting them via magnet there and having them transfer. All right, Pull these guys off. This is such a tiny phone, that's ridiculous, wow. I like the flash design. I like that they did something different overall here, something that wasn't on uh, the same level as Apple, even with the 7 Plus. And of course you got the fingerprint here on the rear. So it's not a button, it's just capacitive. I like the design, honestly. It's very blocky, but it works. It's solid, it feels good, like a little brick. All right, so ceramic, titanium, definitely gonna have to drop test this, see how it does. And uh, let's go ahead and power it on. Very petite power button here. Look at the iPhone 8's massive one. Apparently it'll be programmable via uh, different apps. So it's literally three times as big there. Very interesting. So even looking at the bezels, we can see it does have a little chin here. It's not completely bezel-less, but the top does match up. All right, so better representation here. We can see the iPhone 8 is still going to be a step ahead in terms of design here. Anyways, let's power it on and see what the display looks like in action. I'm just quite impressed at how tiny this thing is. And there it is. There is how that black OLED panel blends seamlessly with these bezels. You can't even begin to see where the screen ends. That's awesome. I, I really, really like that. So overall impressions are good. This thing has a hefty weight to it. Feels pretty premium in your hand for $700. You know, I'd expect it to. Antenna bands very similar to what we're gonna see on the iPhone in several sections on the sides here. Ceramic, of course, fingerprint magnet. All right, so there it is. So this thing is running Android 7.1.1 out of the box, which is nice to see it's updated on the newest version already. Uh, let's go ahead and set it up and I'll be right back. Already a system update the moment I begin setting this up, so that's nice. They are keeping this thing up to date. And while this is updating, just wanted to take a moment to look at the hardware here. A very interesting SIM placement down here on the bottom 
We've got the USB-C and then a very, very nice little speaker grill here. I mean, I'm, I'm just a little bit surprised. I did not expect to like the design so much. It's because it's so different. It's not something you usually see on phones nowadays. Nothing like this little blocky, very interesting looking guy. And another small detail I just noticed. So how this phone handles the earpiece situation. Mi Mix actually had a bone conducting earpiece. This one is a very, very tiny slit up on top and that's where the sound comes through. Now how it actually sounds is a question to be discovered, but uh, that is very impressive. Those tiny details on this phone and something I've never seen on an OLED panel before and it'll be very hard to share with you guys. But when you bend this thing in the light, there's this very interesting shimmer on the darker panel up top when it's black. It's got these lines I haven't seen in an OLED before. Maybe they're using some sort of uh, interesting panel, but as far as I know, it's a QHD panel. Nothing out of the ordinary Super AMOLED. All right, and here it is, guys. This is amazing. The display, but also the stock Android aspect. It's so ridiculously rare to open up a phone, go into the apps, and find almost nothing installed. It is a naked phone here. So back to the display though, it's nice. It doesn't blend as seamlessly with the borders as I would like once you start raising the brightness. So I'm hoping that's something that Apple figures out with the iPhone 8 as it kind of removes that immersion with the lack of bezels. And I'm honestly not liking the type of panel they chose. That little ribbing in the display that I talked about it's more and more apparent. I don't know, I noticed these little details, maybe you wouldn't if you use this, but I just don't like it. When the light catches it, you see all these lines. I'm not sure if that's something that can be improved or what, but I've never seen on any other phone. Anyways, it is the perfect size, guys. I cannot wait. The iPhone 8 is going to be literally the same size here. So these are going to be so comfortable. The next generation of comfortable phones are here where you can use almost everything with one hand. Plus you get so much more screen estate at the same time. I can also see the gestures being a great help with the lack of home button. Plus on the iPhone, you won't even have a little circle down here like this. But enough about the iPhone, get out of here. This is uh, essential phones time. So what can I show you guys? I mean, the bezels, they go up right to the edge. It looks fantastic. The notification center, look at that. It's kind of crazy to see a camera cut out there in the middle, but uh, it works. See, when you're swiping through here, it's very interesting to see this go through that little cutout there. It's as if it's not even there or as if it's an overlay on the display. It works, somehow it just works. And I was very curious to see how this handles media as I'm sure the iPhone is going to handle it in a very similar way. As you can see, it crops it. If I go into full screen mode, it doesn't let me use the cutout over here uh, to look at my content. I wish it did, I think that'd be pretty cool, but I mean, it does the job. It crops it perfectly how you need it to and uh, it works. All right, so I wanna show you how the camera is. 13 megapixel dual lens sensor on the rear, eight on the front, we'll test them out individually. But just starting to record 4K, look at this, it takes so long to start initiating the recording, it hangs. I mean, you're gonna lose your moment if it really takes that long every single time. All right, so um, just wanna give you guys an idea of how the 4K looks. Now. Starting to load this thing, get, getting the camera running is ridiculously slow. I don't know why it hangs out of nowhere. So um, it's a bit dark now, so you're gonna see some grain there, but let me turn on the lights, see if that improves. Yeah, definitely more responsive, of course, when the lights are in. So there's my kitchen. It's a bit dark outside, so there's not too much to show you, but there are a wildfires just a few hundred miles from here, so like my whole deck is covered in this soot. Everyone here in the Pacific Northwest has it. Kind of crazy. I'm not liking the, the camera. I mean, what in the world? Why is it grainy? It's much more grainy than iPhone would be in the same environment. We'll have to do more testing on this, but boy, that is, uh, that is not that great. All right, so using that eight megapixel front-facing camera, I'm getting a black background on me now. Let's see how that noise is. Ooh, oh boy. It is so not sharp, it's, it's a bit disconcerting. All right, with a little bit more uh, light here, what do we got? That's much better, definitely. And uh, lack of optical image stabilization here is visible, definitely. But uh, it's all right, I guess. 
All right, so while the Geekbench is running, I just wanted to mention what I like. Obviously the design, the material choice, titanium, cannot wait to test that in a drop test. I think this will do pretty good. We've got ceramic on the back. This thing is gonna be very, very scratch resistant. It's made to endure daily life. I like the sandwich design, little block, little brick, and uh, I've yet to see the battery life, but I do like the overall form factor. Obviously the display is a big plus. The fact that it actually has a real speaker up top and the camera is in a great position. One of the biggest flaws of the Mi Mix is having a camera down here and having to flip this around to take uh, FaceTime videos or I mean front facing camera videos, it's a bit annoying. So they definitely solved some of the biggest problems of having a display like this on the essential smartphone. The virtual home button aspect of it is good. I would like to see more gestures on it and everything else is okay. I mean, the camera is just okay. The software is all right. I feel like they should have done something custom for it, but then again, it's either custom or the official Android experience and I would much rather have that. So it's all right, guys. It's definitely not a bad phone. For $700, this thing is all right, I guess. I think the Galaxy S8 would be a better value. It has a better camera and for me, camera is very important. So that one still has a very nice display. And still, wait to see this guy. It'll be $300 more expensive, but it might be worth the money over this guy. So uh, let me finish this up. This thing has a Snapdragon 835, so I don't expect too much from it. Pretty in line with everything else. I'm guessing around a 6,000 multi-core and 2,000 single core score. Yep, so just like most Android smartphones with the Snapdragon 835, very in line with those scores. 1,900 single core score, 6,300 multi-core. So it's no slouch, but it's definitely not going to be as fast as the iPhone 8. It does feel well optimized though, definitely. This thing is responsive. It's not hanging except when I clicked record on 4K video. That's something I noticed otherwise pretty nice. So there it is guys. It is an awesome phone. It, it does stand out from the crowd while being very simple. It also does have a very unique aspect to it. Time will tell how this thing competes with uh, the other devices, but I'm very curious to see the durability aspect of it as it's one of its biggest marketed features, the materials and everything. The display is certainly cool. Nothing that we haven't seen to this extent before, the Mi Mix, and with the Mi Mix 2, it'll go even further. I think that alone isn't a reason to get a smartphone like this. It should work all together very well, and the cameras, to be frank, for me, are a little disappointing. So there it is, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Just a unique smartphone, and I'll have a drop test for this guy up soon. Peace.